Hello and welcome to the Art Gallery Workshop. I'm your host Christopher Epling. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. We have a couple of really exciting things to share with you including a visitor here in the studio. Uh, today's focus is going to be looking at a couple of things. First we're going to be checking out sketchbooks, uh, what they're used for, how you can use them, uh, their usefulness with anything from um, collecting information uh, for a particular commission or a particular drawing or just jotting down ideas, notes, and stuff like that. I'm a cartoonist, so I use a lot of sketchbooks. The next thing we're going to be doing today is actually looking at uh, faces, and drawing uh, heads and, 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 and faces, profile shots of, um, of um, faces. Now, uh, students have a, uh, I've, I've noticed a lot of trouble next to probably fingers and hands, um, getting the, uh, the face dimensions correctly, um, sometimes poses a lot of challenges for students. but if you if you use the Marvel method, the method we've been sharing with you now for for quite a while here in the art gallery workshop, uh, you should be um, just just fine to uh, handle that with no problem. Okay. Um, now I'd like to take a second before we actually get into the uh, uh, the meat of the show, if you will. And I want to share with you a couple of submissions that I've received from students um, stemming from the art gallery workshop last semester. Uh, the art workshop here on Pike TV actually uh, has had some submissions coming in from students of uh, student created artwork books, comic books, illustrated stories, and um, uh, various things like that. So I've got a few with me actually here today. Now the really cool thing about this, these, these are from actually, believe it or not, these are from Jackson County and the reason, or, or um, Jackson, Kentucky, I'm sorry. And um, the reason for that is the art, work, the art gallery workshop was through KVAC. And it, it encompassed uh, 20 counties, um, including Pike County. And so student works are continually being submitted. Okay? And um, I have some examples. Now, the really cool part about this, these are for some uh, third grade and, and, and uh, fourth graders from um, uh, Jackson. So here, this is actually the garden. And uh, the, the illustrator and author here is Madeline Hall. And she has a story called The Garden. Um, she has actually went to great depths to illustrate every page. She's come up with her own characters. She's created uh, her own uh, storyline. When I conducted this workshop, one of the things that I asked students to do was to create their own characters. So first they would come up with ideas for a setting, all the parts of a story. So when we talk about language arts in school and in education, there are uh, the construction of a story is a big um, aspect of the language arts. What, what are parts of a story? So that's a big part also of the art gallery workshop. We talk about the parts of a story, the plot, the setting, the theme, the, the conflict, the resolution, the characters, the antagonist, the hero, stuff like that. And all the way down to third and fourth grade, students are actually creating and somehow getting a grasp on these um, somewhat, I guess, challenging uh, concepts. Um, so they will draw out um, uh, just little sketches of, of their characters and then they're asked to talk about these characters. W wh what's the characters' names? Uh, what are they? Uh, what's their story? Uh, this one here is, is called Tie-Dye Man and this is from Ali Grass Pictures by um, uh, Ali, written in, and, and illustrated by Ali Gross. I'm sorry, I get it right there. How she, she, she wrote it twice. So this is kind of cool. Um, Tie-Dye Man here. Uh, you can see that she's come up with her own unique character. He's got his, uh, his theme on there with his tie-dye shirt and whatnot. Um, again, she's done a wonderful job. Here's her, her actual her character uh, background. So she lists who's in her story here. Um, she went on then to uh, talk about her story, uh, where the character is from, uh, the other characters in the story, the conflict the background, the setting, the theme, the resolution, all this is found right here in a fourth graders illustrated book which is amazing. And that's one of the benefits of what we call sequential art. Sequential art is a really big fancy word for simply combining pictures with words to tell a story. That's it. Now the benefits of this come into education because students love to draw. They love comics. I mean we, we all love to you know check out a really nice illustrated book. So whenever you incorporate education along with um, 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 drawing and make it fun, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more well received by the students. Now this is illustrated and uh, written by Victoria uh, Fugit and she's also from Jackson. This is a runaway part. 
uh, dog park, the runaway dog. That's the name of it. Here's the park. I'm sorry, I got confused. One of the cool things is with hers is that she's broken everything down in these small panels, and she's cut those out and pasted those into the book. She's written her entire story based on these certain characters revolving around the dog park and taking the dog for a walk and all this. So just uh, amazing stuff coming out. I'll share one more with you. Uh, this one here is actually um, The Animal and the Cake, written and illustrated by Elizabeth Hall. And uh, she did a really great job of filling up her entire pages. That's one of the things that we uh, requested that students do. And text placement, where the words go on the page, all this stuff was covered during the art workshop. So really proud of these students and appreciate them sending them in. Now, we're actually really privileged and lucky to have a student in uh, the studio with us uh, today. Uh, Ethan Hall is a junior um, at I Betsy. Uh, um, a, a so you're a sophomore, right? Okay. Uh, I, oh, I'm sorry, Ethan Howe. I, 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 see, I already messed your name up here. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, junior at Betsy Lane High School. Sophomore. Sophomore. See, I'm, gonna, I'm just testing you. I'm making sure you know these yeah. things. But, um, so we appreciate you being here today, okay? Yeah. Sorry for butchering your name. Anyway. That's all right. But um, Ethan is a superiorly talented artist and a writer. Um, his, his works encompasses almost an entire vast world uh, that he's created through almost five volumes on one story, which is absolutely incredible. And especially, um, you know, for, for a uh, sophomore in high school, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we want to talk to you. We appreciate you being here today. We're going to look at your work. We're going to talk about your process a little bit more. Before we do that, I want to kind of cut away to the screen. I want to show you everybody a couple things um, that I've been working on. Now, this is a comic strip from Modern Mountain Magazine. Um, uh, at the top, you can see it's called Feud and Blues. I apologize a little bit. This is a little bit uh, blurry. That's my fault. I brought in a, a file today that wasn't real clear, but you can kind of see what's going on. So up at the top, we have um, the title here, okay, Feud and Blues by Christopher Epling. Right here, we have somewhere deep in the mountains of Pike County. We see two houses pretty close to each other, separated only by a fence and a small creek. In the next panel up here at the top, you see this little guy, and he's looking over at the neighbors, and he's wondering if they're home. And here he is. He's peeking around the corner, and he's, he's, he's saying to himself, here's my one chance to get that pig, right? So you know what he's kind of after. And those of you familiar with the Hatfield-McCoy history, you kind of see what it's about. So here the character's going up to the door, and they got a note on the door that says, uh, going to town. The light bulbs went off above his head. And so he's running as fast as, as he can. And they're all gone. And he says, yee-haw. He walks inside to his wife, and he says, honey, we're going to eat good for supper. First he goes over, and he says, where's my hammer at? He notices his hammer's gone. And he looks a little bit closer. Hey, crowbar's missing, too. And my saw. The ladder, too. And even the dynamite, he says. So then he's walking outside. He's got his shotgun. I'm getting that pig. He's gonna. He's determined. So he, he shoots, the, shoots his shotgun, a big hole in the door, and he opens up the hole, and uh, there you see uh, kind of been turned around on him. All of the tools he was looking for has been stolen in the, and in the neighbor's shed. And then at the main end panel, we got the, we got the pig sitting on the, on the grassy uh, knoll there by the house. He's looking and, and as, the, as the character ex uh, expresses his frustration with his neighbors getting the best of him. So this comic was created for Modern Mountain Magazine. I like to tie a lot of stuff here at home, um, and we're going to be uh, also looking today at, at my website because I want to share with you, um, a lot of students ask, you know, well, what can we do in terms of um, employment and work or, or, and, and actually having some type of um, employment coming in, or, um, an income from our artwork. This was recently uh, finished um, for a, a store in Somerset, Kentucky. Um, it's called Expressions Tea and Gift Store. So these two graphics you see are used on t-shirts, keychains, mugs, and various things like that. Um, I just finished that for um, this shop. And then also here's a, a Marble Missionary Baptist Church header. So you could do store logos, uh, headings. Of course, we've covered the uh, Pikeville uh, zip line map for Pikeville tourism. Uh, on the last show. All this can be found on my website. Students want to look and see exactly what type of work you can actually get hired to do as an artist. Here's one for the Pike County Health Department. That's a logo uh, finished for them recently. And then here's an, another Kentucky author. His name is Jason Belcher. 
Um, this is his newest book called The Nexus of Innovation, uh, The Promise of Easter Kentucky. Now this is a pretty powerful image. And if you look at it really close, you could see why. At the top, this is an iceberg. And you can tell at the top here, the water, this is the crest of the water. This is, this is all you can see is an, of an iceberg usually is the top, right? Uh, on the top of this iceberg, we have some pretty stereotypical imagery. We have a hillbilly playing a banjo. He's got his moonshine. There's a trailer, a mobile home behind him, an outhouse. And here's a um, media person, a media representative videotaping every bit of this. But if you go further underneath the iceberg, you see all the positive things about our region. You see Main Street projects where we have um, uh, renovation to, uh, you know, to, to enhance the look of our city streets. Um, we have um, outdoor um, um, activities and like uh, you have the zip line, you have the, uh, uh, the rapids, the canoeing, the kayaking, the hiking. Um, down here below we have the Mountain Arts Center, we have the Jenny Wiley Theater, we also have over here the Moorhead um, State University um, Observatory, we have the Challenger Learning Center and Hazard, we have fitness and athletics, you have the, um, the Runners Club, the Road Runners that meet, um, Elkhorn City just be is becoming a trail town I think, so um, over here we have the East Kentucky Science Center, we have culture, food, we have education, we have SOAR which is the you know, the ARI folks that, 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 that are distributing uh, that, that massive um, amount of um, funding that we got to enhance these things through education. We have wildlife, diversity, culture, have a strong workforce. And down here we have, of course, uh, University of Pikeville and the School of Osteopathic Medicine Symbols. So all this stuff here, um, positive things about our region, but they're not always covered. Usually what we see is right here at the top. We see the stereotypical hillbilly banjo, moonshine, and the like. Don't you agree with that a little bit, Ethan? Yeah. It does seem like that every time media um, talks about our region or has something to say about our region, it's negative. You ever notice that? Yes, I have. Yeah. A lot, actually. It, it's out there quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Now, um, some young artists, when they work and they produce their stuff, their, their, their content of their work, they're greatly influenced by where they grew up you know, where you're from. Yeah. It impacts who you are, and no matter what, right through art, writing, and everything. Now, I didn't ask you, uh, ask you to kind of give you an idea of what I was going to ask you. Now, this one wasn't one of them, because I always like to ask a question that I didn't prepare you for, okay? Uh, yeah. I want you to tell everybody at home, you can look there in the camera, to how did the region, growing up here in, in near Pike County, here in Pike County, if, you know, impact you in your work? Well, it showed me that Really, Kentucky is like a little hidden garden of Eden. That just because like big people look at us as like we don't know what we're doing, or we don't wear shoes, or we only drink moonshine and play banjo, that a lot of great artists and people have come from this place. Mm -hmm. Like Johnny Depp has come and look where he is. That's what inspired me was that in the long run our culture our culture and diversity has boosted us so much that we can take what the news throws at us mm -hmm. and we make it into something bigger. Mm -hmm. And by us not fighting back and just accepting what they say, we win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it could become, if we, if we almost accept those stereotypes, it hurts us, don't it? Yeah. Now, in your own creations, what you tell, what your stories that you write and everything, how, how has growing up here in, in Appalachia um, impacted that? Now, most of your stuff is based on a, on a spiritual religious theme, right? Yeah. Okay, so, so would you say growing up in Appalachia is, is, is a part of that? Yeah. Okay. We're, like, we're very religious, mm -hmm. and it's not spiritual, even yeah. that. It's just... I mean, it's just how you're raised. Okay, that's good. Everything around you will influence you in some way. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to like, jump on it, but it will soon come and make you think and be like, I've learned this, mm -hmm. and that's what I was like. I've learned it, and so why not incorporate it to my benefit? Absolutely. I'm glad you are. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to bring you in here to talk to everybody, okay? Because right. your writings that you submitted to the Art Gallery Workshop, they're, they're really in-depth. I mean, you've got five books around this subject. 
and you've brought in some artwork today. This is the art workshops. So you want to keep it focused on art. You've brought in some of your characters here, right? Yeah. So these are characters from this massive storyline that you've created. Yep. Would you say this is a saga? Yeah. Would you say it's something like people, for the viewers to get an idea of what we mean, something as big as like, uh, let's say, like the Star Wars trilogy? Yeah, exactly. Or Homer's Odyssey. Yeah. Or, or, or something like that, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. How do you keep all that together? I guess this is one of your, like this, this is one of your characters, right? Yeah. And, and, and so tell me, how in the world do you keep all those things that's happening in your story in mind when you write something new for your story? I usually tie it together. Like, it's all the way that I word stuff is what sticks with me. As growing up, I've seen, like, all these heroes, Batman, Superman, all of them, and, like, it's what happened to them that makes them, you know, the hero. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I get it to stick because of the story I give behind of them becoming this hero. And that's what inspires me to write is that you can't write a story without somebody that's good. Mm -hmm. And that also relates to Kentucky that we can take all this and just still be good about it. See, that's uh, one thing that I really do like about your work is that you, you show these struggles, right? Yeah. And you have these struggles coming from your characters, but they overcome this. Now, now notice you, you, re, you have a, a, a God-given talent here when, you, when producing uh, work with faces and, and uh, you know, um, characters, making them different. Yeah. Okay? And you have David and Goliath, and I'm assuming this is uh, from the Old Testament story of David and Goliath. I right? put my own little twist on it. Okay. And David, he becomes... The Goliath. He okay. turns on all of his friends because he lets what makes him a demon. He just lets it take over him okay. because he embraces it. Yeah. He embra Okay. Okay. Now, now, do you, now, you have a lot of antagonists in your story, don't you? Yeah. Okay. And you have a lot of heroes too. I'm assuming. You got Samson. Yeah. And um, you also now when you're designing these characters, let's say you're getting ready to draw the look of, of Samson here. Okay. How do you decide what that character is going to look like? Well, I look at all the other characters that I've did, mm -hmm. and I think, and I'm like, they all cannot look the same because that's sort of boring. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to need some strong facial features so like when you see them again, you're like, oh, I know who that is without having to so you, title it. You have this strong chin you here. Yeah, strong jawline. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, well, you've done an amazing job. Your, your story is highly in-depth and everything. And while we have you here in the studio, I'd like to ask you, um, what's your process? What's your writing process? How do you begin a story or designing a character? What do you do? The first thing I do is I think. Mm -hmm. I take everything I've ever done and incorporate it. Okay. Everything I've watched or heard, and like with the Holy Ghost, the main leader mm -hmm. of the bunch. And that's this one here, right? Yeah. Okay. With that one I've took, and I'm like, everybody needs that one guy that starts the revolution. Mm -hmm. And so throughout the whole stories, it's been about just one main protagonist that just breaks off to another. And I finally caught myself, and I'm like, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take all the protagonists, and what I like about each one I've made, I'm going to pick a certain aspect, and I'm going to stick it to this one character. Stick with it, okay. Yeah. That's great. And so just having like a copy is just the perfect protagonist. So each one's unique, right? Yeah. So not only are they unique in how they look and how you've drawn them and designed them, they're unique in their background or story and that thing, right? Yeah. Okay, that's wonderful. What's your preferred medium, though? If you Like for these you have, it looks like pencil. Yeah. But now, now some artists, young artists at home, they might be looking at this and they might be saying to themselves, that looks really cool, but when I draw, when I, when I pencil something out, I can't get that cool shading that you have here. So how did you pull that off? What, what's this shading? Well, you can take your finger and like rub it, or okay. you can get like a stump. Well, what's a stump? It is like a shading utensil. Okay. And what's it, what's it made of? Uh, uh, what does it look like? It's like, it's solemnly white. It's kind of like an eraser that doesn't erase. It just smudges everything. I like a, is, it, is it like really compressed paper? Yeah. Okay, in and, a way. and you take it and you smudge it, right? Yeah. But you can also use your finger? Yeah. Well, a little bit later, we're going to be drawing, just based on what you've brought in, we, you know, we're going to be drawing a profile headshot of a character. All right. 
And when we do that, do you think you can show that technique a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, let's be sure and do that, all right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm just really impressed with everything that you've done. And, um, you know, it's, it's, you've written how many stories now? Five. Five. Yeah. Right? And, you're, and you're a sophomore. Yeah. Okay. And um, I guess your teachers at Betsy Lane are really, yeah. really happy with you, right? Because you're motivated about writing. You're motivated about this. Yeah. Okay. And, and what, what's, your, what's your plans for when you graduate? What do you want to do after school? I want to continue writing and maybe even get into, like, a movie. Like, writing school? Yeah. Like I would script? like to, like, make what I do into, like, a movie or... Like a veterinarian, I just want to help people or make them like, smile and laugh. I feel like mm -hmm. that's what makes the world continue being together is like laughter. So college. And joy. Yeah. Okay, and then and then you, what you can think you're gonna. I know you're just a sophomore. You got plenty of time to figure it out. But you think you gonna do something with art? You gonna yeah. you gonna make people smile through art? Yeah. And writing. Through my books. Yeah. Well, you're well on your way to doing that. You know that. I mean, I'm just I'm blown away by his talent and. And, uh, you know, it's something that I'm glad you came in today. You're writing. I wish everybody at home could read some of the stories that he has. I mean, it is, uh, when we, we got these submissions in for the art gallery workshop, and Ethan's was, um, you know, it was, it, I was like, wow, this, this looks like he's put a lot of thought into this. And when I read it, I was really impressed by just how detailed everything was, you know, and, and all the characters, how they relate together and everything. You did a great job. You really did. Huh? Thanks. Um, what's the name of the book you wrote? It's Skyward Sun. Skyward Sun. And it, all these characters that we've looked at today are in there, right? Yeah. Or the, like, their thought is incorporated. Somewhere incorporated. Yeah. Do you keep a sketchbook? Yeah. You do? Now, remember at the beginning of the show, I talked about sketchbooks. Yeah. Okay, and I want to show you a few that I keep. Now, sketchbooks, um, you can keep, uh, how many do you keep? One or two or three? Or I five? keep like three. Three? Yeah. Now, people at home are probably, now, all, you mean you're three that you're working on at one time? Right? Yeah. Like, okay. yeah, they're usually broken up, but I usually keep them all in the same. Okay, so you're working on, so, so what I'm saying is you have three sketchbooks and you're working on each one of them. Yeah. Okay, now some people at home might be saying, well, why would you keep three? Why not just one? Right? Yeah. Well, the reason that I can try to answer my reason anyway, Ethan might be the same, and I'm betting it is. Um, as an artist, as a writer, um, you, you, you have different assignments. So so one of, I showed you examples earlier, and Ethan was here and he looked at them. Uh, um, the Nexus of Innervation, the book cover, and then also the comic for the modern, you know, there's various things you work on. You work on a logo for a, a company. Um, so when you're doing that, you need different sketchbooks. So I keep a different sketchbook for everything. And I, I want to share with you um, a couple of uh, examples out of my sketchbooks today. And this is just amazing work here. Uh, Ethan, we're going to actually draw together here in a second, okay? All right. All right, so this one right here is actually dealing more with um, all color. So I have a sketchbook that I keep for um, all non-colored stuff. And now this one I haven't colored yet, <laughs> but it is in the color sketchbook. That, this is just a little doodle I did. It took me about five, I don't know, five or ten minutes the other day. Uh, these little zombie guys walking around, and then you have the character with the slingshot here trying to shoot him. It's not the best tool for zombies, is it? <laughs> Slingshots. That works. Um, then also you see uh, there's other color in the back here. You'll have uh, this little guy with a hammer and this little creature here at the bottom. Um, over here we have, uh, have a fishbowl robot. He's trying to feed himself because, you know, his body's a robot and the head is a fishbowl. So just weird things. Now, color, I'll, I'll do color examples out of one book. Then in another book, I'll reserve completely just for doing, like, um, that's Edgar Allan Poe, okay? I'll number my pages at the top. So this entire sketchbook is completely profile pictures, what we're doing today, okay? We're working since you brought in the profiles of your characters. So I'll have one um, notebook for, for maybe um, uh, just profile shots. Um, I'll have um, another, note, another notebook that I'll use, uh, such as this one right here. And this will be like when I see people, you know, for characters, right? Because you've got to have characters. So I was working on Carbide Bottom the other day, and there's a girl in Carbide Bottom, so I'd sketch out a girl. Or you have this down, Crow Magnum Man, that was for a project, and this down here. And I take notes maybe on, on, on the characters. So when I'm designing characters for my stories, uh, I keep a notebook for that, just for that reason, no other reason. So if you open this notebook, it's all sketches for the characters, sort of like you were talking about a little bit ago. Um, 
Yeah, I've got more, believe it or not. This is a sketchbook here that is focused on um, all notes for um, different assignments that I'm working on. So if I'm working on, a, on a, a long story, so outside the comic strips, this is all story stuff. So yeah, tons of notes. And no, your sketchbooks are great for that. They're great. So there's even a book, and this is written, um, well, it's edited um, by Danny Gregory, and it's called An Illustrated Life. And what this is is a collection of all... Um, sketchbook um, examples from artists out there today and what he did he approached various artists in different fields illustration game design and he asked them can we look in your note in your sketchbook and this entire book is filled with pages and upon pages of various works from um, different um, artists so you see here these, these are all done on a moleskin notebook and this is all pen and ink drawings that she's done. It's just incredible. I love looking inside of artists' uh, notebooks. Look at this. This is uh, one that was uh, d devoted all to architecture. So you have these landscapes and stuff. So it's just, I love looking at artists' notebooks. And I also love looking uh, and learning more about what artists use to create their pieces. Okay? So today we're going to be doing a profile shot, right. similar to what you brought in. Okay? Okay. And, um, um, yeah, I even brought this in. I even jot stuff down on napkins. If I forget my sketchbook, I'm using I'm using napkins to, to work on. So we're going to be looking today at drawing a uh, profile shot similar to what Ethan uh, has, has uh, brought in to show us. If you're at home right now, grab your pencil and paper and get ready. We're going to be doing something from a popular um, uh, TV uh, movie uh, series that a lot of you may know. I asked Ethan to pick out what he'd like to draw and, and what did you select? The uh, Aladdin's genie. Aladdin's genie. Okay. Now, those of you who watched the art gather art workshop, you know that uh, there's the Marvel method. Here on Pike TV, we have this every every week. If you tune in, um, you're you're going to know this method. So we're going to start out here, and I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning, and I'm going to show you step by step on the screen what we're going to be doing. Okay. So you get you're going to get a. Uh, a sneak peek at what we're doing, and All so right. will the audience, okay? So here we have step one, the famous circle. I don't know how many times I've asked students to draw a circle, but that's what we're starting out with. Step two is going to be adding these two lines onto the circle. Step three, now you see the gray, how that changed from red to gray on there, Ethan? Yeah. What's happened is this is all in pencil. So whenever you're drawing this, you need to be drawing very lightly don't want to press down really hard. The red shows the next step. The gray is what we just finished. So now we added two circles inside of our large circle. The next step is the nose. It's just a piece stemming out from, uh, from the circle. Next we have the goatee. Um, the goatee is uh, just an upside down letter D. The next shape we're going to be making is a backwards letter C for the ear. From there, we'll be going to this giant upside down letter U. Well, it's a letter U, almost upright, I guess, but yeah. for the chin. Um, from there, we'll be adding more detail to the eyes, the eyebrows, and then we'll fix the nose a little bit more. It hangs down more. We'll shape the ear up just a little bit. From there, we'll add more detail to the mouth, then the teeth and the tongue. Then the shape for the head, the ponytail, and finally the beard. So when we're finished, we should have something to look about like that. Think we will? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's give it a shot and see what happens, okay? All right. So we're going to be going step by step with just what I showed you and what me and Ethan are going to do. We're going to be looking at those exact steps and drawing here for you right now. So grab your paper, grab your pencil. Um, I'm using one of these... Uh, mechanical pencils. Ethan's got a mechanical pencil. We're going to be actually inking this when we're finished using a, a brush. You can use a Sharpie. Uh, what I'm using is just, um, you can find this at any art supply store. Um, and you've got your brush ready too, right? Yep. Okay, so we'll ink it after we're done. So the first step we're going to be doing is the circle. Now you got to remember, this first circle that we're drawing has to be big enough. It's going to be the entire head. So let's go ahead and do our circle. Now sketch this out. Don't press down really hard. That's where so many students mess up. Because this is going to evaporate. What I mean by that is when you're finished drawing this character out, 
you're going to go back, you're going to ink it, and then you're going to erase these pencil lines, okay? The next shape we're making is going to be the crosshair stuff, right down the middle. Now remember, you don't want to make this a uh, straight line. This is more of a uh, the line that curves with the curvature of the circle. Imagine the circle being a basketball. See how that works? Same goes for that line. And what this did was, the reason we added these two lines in here, that gives us the center point of the of the face, right? So now we're going to put a circle here. Are you doing okay over there? Yep. Okay, we got a circle here. And we got another circle here. Everybody knows what these should be, right? These will be your eyes eventually, hopefully. We'll see what happens. Okay, the next step is the nose. Now the nose is shaped a little different than this when we're done. The lighter you uh, press down, the easier this is gonna be later on. Now you've got your upside down letter D. Remember that. It was also the goatee that we did um, just a little bit ago kind of shaped a little bit outward. Of course, you know his, his mouth is. If you know the character we're drawing, then you kind of know where this should go, okay? Something like that right there. So that's what you should have so far, okay? From here, remember that backwards letter C we did. It's gonna go right about here. It's kind of big, he's got big ears. It's gonna look something like that, okay? Then we have the giant chin part, and it starts out kind of over here, it comes down, back in. Remember the upside down U we talked about? Yeah. Well, actually, it's upright U, I guess, but you know what I mean. The misshapen U, we'll call it that, okay? Yep. Here we go. All right, got that. Now we're gonna put a little bit more detail into the eyes, so it's got a little bit of a, where his cheek comes up right here. And they've got these little lines that go up to the top of the eyes right here on each side. They're not really that noticeable, but they're pretty no noticeable. Um, we have the eyeballs right there in the middle. Not in the middle, to the side, I mean. So this is what you should have so far. Doing okay? Yep. Once we ink this in a little bit, it'll be a lot easier for you because you can shape this up better, you know? Yep. Okay, let's move on now. we got the eyebrows. The eyebrows are actually these little shapes that go at the top. Now they're shaped kind of funny. They're, they're wide, more wide in the middle than they are at the ends. Something like that. So you have one on that side and then you'll have another on this side, right? Yep. Something like that right there. Do you use this marble method a whole lot? Sometimes. Sometimes. You know what? Some artists like it, some artists don't. And it's completely up to you what you want to do. It does help though. Now for the nose, um, we're going to point this down more. He has a sort of a pointy nose, bends like that. Robin Williams was the voiceover to this, to this character in the Disney movie. You remember? Yep. And didn't you say that he was one of your favorite uh, voice actors? Yeah. You brought this character to life, didn't you? Yes, it did. We're going to point the pointed ear comes out. Stops about right there. It's a great loss, though, what happened with Robin Williams. I would take this moment to say if anybody out there right now is feeling any types of uh, feelings about hurting themselves or anything like that, that, uh, you know, talk to somebody. Uh, depression's a real thing. affects a lot of people. Um, but nothing, nothing, nothing's worth doing, doing that. So just throw that out there, okay? Um, so the chin comes down a little bit more. There's also somebody, always somebody around that cares, right, Ethan? Yeah. Always. If you get down, you could just watch one of Robin Williams movies. There They're you, really picky up here. There you go. Watch a comedy, right? Yeah. Feel, feel better if you can. So now we're adding the uh, mouth coming down. The mouth extends over the nose just a little bit right there. You can see how I've done that. Am I going too fast for you? Yeah, it's all okay. Right. All right. Yeah. Now the curve of, the, of his mouth here actually comes in a little bit, just a little bit, and it curves back out. It follows that same line as that D you made earlier. Just like that, okay? So far that's what we got. Kind of looking like the genie. Still needs a little bit of work, don't it? So now we'll go ahead and we'll add the teeth in there. And his teeth come up like this. 
and they follow the shape of the bottom of the of the jaw. Okay, they actually curve upward a little bit, just like that. Now the upper teeth, you can only see the top part. It's gonna come all the way back, just like that right there. See? Okay. Then the tongue. The tongues are here. Something like that right there, okay? I'd like to thank um, PAC TV for hosting the art gallery workshop. We'd also like to thank um, the holler.org for um, producing it along with the PAC, along with PAC TV. Um, I do want to say now, if you are a student out there watching today and you say, hey, uh, I, I draw, I'd like, to, I'd like for them to see my work, show my work on there. Well, send it to me. Uh, log it, log on to uh, the holler.org. Have your uh, parent or guardian help you out there if you need it. Get their permission, of course, if you're um, wanting to send something over and and send us a, a copy of your artwork. We'll we'll post it on here. We'll talk about it. Um, and if you really feel like you want to take that leap, like Ethan has, you could come in and sit in the studio and show us some of your work right here on Pike TV. Isn't that right? Yeah. So now we're going to add the, um, we're going to go ahead and add the ponytail. So he's got a ponytail. He's a genie, right? Yep. So it's going to come up. About right there. Hair is one of the hardest things, too, for for anybody, you know, just students. And I, I have trouble with drawing hair sometimes. Um, seems like I want to put more curves than what needed, you know? Yeah. What about you? It's mostly like the, like how to show detail inside the hair is what usually gets me. Okay, so it's more of the actual different strands and shades and things. Yeah, like I usually get lost in that. <laughs> it's okay, it's, it's, it happens, I promise to everybody. You, you're growing as an artist more and more each time you try though, right? Yep. So now we have the beard. He has a beard that comes up, actually connects right here. Let's go come down and out. Follow the shape that you made with that U earlier. Remember the U? Yep. You're going to follow that. And it's going to come down this way. It gets a little bit wider as it comes down to the point at the end. And at this point at the end here, we have the curl coming in his beard. See? Like that. You're doing a good job. Thank you. I know we're going a little faster than probably normal, but so there's the curve in the beard. Now we're going to go ahead. If uh, you're doing a great job over there, um, the last step in this, believe it or not, is we're going to draw his uh, chin line on the other side of the of the, uh, of the beard there. So that's there. We're going to draw the back of the neck coming down right here, like that. Okay. And then this piece right here, as it connects up, has to be altered a little bit too. It's too. It's not shaped. Exactly right. It actually comes up a little more and then back in. It's got a big, a big jaw like that. See? And there's our character. So, this isn't the end of it though, right? Right. What are we going to do next? We're going to ink it. We're going to ink it, okay? So, in order to ink it, of course, we want to make sure we have uh, everything penciled the way we want it. And it should be, if you follow the steps, if you're at home right now, if you have a Sharpie, that'll work, ballpoint pen even. You don't need one of these um, fancy, not really, they're not that expensive really, but <laughs> you don't need some special marker, right? No. Okay, so then just follow the lines you want to keep. Now when you go to trace this, you're tracing over your pencil lines. You don't want to trace every line you see, right? Yeah. Right. Because if you did, it would look terrible, right? <laughs> you have yeah. all these circles and shapes going on. You only want to choose the lines you want to keep and you want to trace those, right? Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and get started doing that. So you trace over the lines you want to keep, because at the end, you go back and you erase. And once you erase, all those lines will disappear, right? Yeah. Now this is probably the, I think this is my probably my favorite part of drawing right now. Um, it's after you've done all the hard work with the pencil lines. A lot of people, they, they, don't, they don't know that, you know, they look at a completed, let's say, pen and ink drawing, and they say, wow, that's really, you know, it's really cool how that artist did that. Um, 
and they think that the artist maybe just sat down with a pen and just did it. Nine times out of ten, no, I would actually, okay, nine times out of ten sounds pretty fair. Um, artists have traced it out in pencil prior to ever laying down any type of ink or color or anything else. So it's a, it's a big part of the process. But once you have it and you start to ink it, you can see all your hard work paying off. I would say probably you spend 80% of your time penciling. You spend about 10% 10, 10 of your time inking and about 10% of your time erasing the pencil lines. That's what goes into uh, a drawing like this. Now let's say you wanted to put, last time we, were, we, we talked about watercolor um, last week, and let's say if you let, let's say you drew this out and you say, hey, I'd like to add some some color, maybe some watercolor to this drawing. Uh, what you'd want to do, um, if you were to apply um, something um, with any type of like of a wet substance to this ink once it dries, it's going to get um, uh, wet again and it's going to smear on you. So a little kind of a little bit of a, a tip, if you want to uh, put color to a pen and ink drawing after you've done it is to take it to a photocopy machine and make a copy of your drawing okay just print it out in black and white take that and add ink to it because the type of ink that a photocopy machine uses is a lot different than the type of ink that's in a marker it's made to dry and to stay stay that way okay now of course if you add enough water to it it's gonna smear but it's a lot more, um, it's a lot easier to work with, you know, than say going and trying to color uh, on top of an ink like this, you know? Yeah. You doing okay over there? Yep. I've kind of just let you do your thing and not watching because um, I'm sure it's going to turn out great. I'll check it out though at the end, okay? All right. We'll compare and then we'll, then you sign yours and give it to me and and I'll sign mine and give it to you. How's that sound? Cool. All right, so now we got the chin coming down. All right. So, next thing to do is those little circles inside the eyes. And if you wanted to, you could actually go as far as to color in the inside the mouth there, too. That might help some. Kind of helps you get, I guess, to get an idea of uh, what all you need to erase. And you do want to take a little bit of time before you start erasing too. If you start erasing right after uh, inking it, I'm going to grab another marker actually, one that's um, got a little bit of a better tip on it to do this with. There we go. So you want to take a little bit of time because if you were to start erasing right after you do this, it's going to smear like crazy. So what do you think about the Marvel method? I like it. <laughs> Oh, you think you're going to use it now? Yeah. Um, More than when I've used it. Before? Yeah. That's great. And uh, you're going to continue writing, I guess? Yeah. What, any ideas for your new book? Uh, I'm going to, like, make it after what happens to, like, Holloway and show his predecessor. Okay. And Holloway's the main character, right? One in of the main the, Yeah, in the... Fourth, uh, yeah, he takes place in the fourth and the whole short story in between the second. And I think it'd be uh, good to tell our audience too that your books are are based during or after the tribulation, right? Yeah. Okay, that's that's really cool. It's like when the rapture happens, he's there to make sure after the seven years the world like purifies instead of just straight up ending and there's no more people at all. So he's trying his best to save yeah. uh, mankind or something? Yeah. Wow, that's really, really, it's really, really interesting. It's good stuff though. You're a great writer and you're a really talented artist and and so uh, those two together, you have a, a lot of opportunity to have a career in this if you're if you're wanting that. Nah, I want it. <laughs> that's great. And, um, one day whenever you, you become famous and you're Stories are on bookshelves everywhere, and they've made a movie adaptation of it, and all this stuff's going on. Um, you'll have to always remember to try to incorporate something about home in your work, okay? All right. Will you make me that promise? Yeah. Because that's something that I always want to do is, is, you know, is uh, incorporate where I'm from in my work a little bit.
I think it's important, don't you? Yeah. With the first book, I sort of, I kind of do that by like showing the mass like scene of New York. Because like for me, when I think of New York, I think of like skyscrapers and you know, oh, lights sure. and everything. Yeah. And I mean, that's common in Kentucky because we've never, like, we don't have that really. We don't have, we don't have uh, skyscrapers, do we? No, we're not like huge cities. Yeah. But we do have uh, some pretty tall mountains. Yes, we do. And you know what? They're a lot prettier to look at. They are. <laughs> don't you think so? Yeah. I do too. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and finish this up. And looks like we're about done with the sketching. How are you doing? I'm just you're, finishing you're it along. We're moving a little fast, aren't we? Yeah. But that's okay. You've hung in there. You have hung in there for sure. So, um, what's this guy's name again? <laughs> Is it Genie? Is that yeah. right? Okay, Genie from what? Aladdin? Aladdin. Aladdin. All right, so if you're at home right now, and let's say you've tried to draw along with us and you've uh, succeeded in putting together your own version of, uh, of the Genie, then please send that to me. I would love to see it. All right, so that concludes the drawing of uh, Aladdin's genie. How do you think you did? I think I did pretty good to go as fast as we did. That was fast, right? Yeah. But you did a great job. You used the marble mix. Show everybody what you came up with. Excellent. I mean, it looks uh, exactly off the cartoon, right? You did a great job. In a way. Yeah. It does. Really good job. I really appreciate you coming in. I tell you what, let's go ahead and just exchange them. I'll give you mine, and you give me yours. How's that sound? Yeah. You got your name on yours? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll trade. How's that sound? All right. Okay. I'd like to thank everybody. Oh, before we do this, is anybody you want to say hello to? Yes, they are. Okay, go right ahead. I'd like to say hello to my girlfriend, Michaela Akers. Don't want to forget that one. Yeah. My family, and last but not least, Betsy Lane High School. A lot of talent at Betsy Lane High School. Yeah, they are. And um, so we really appreciate you coming in today, Ethan. Right. And. Um, it was nice meeting your grandma and everything. Yeah. So uh, we'd like to have you back sometime. I'd love to be back. Good luck on finishing your books out. Thanks. And good luck on getting published. Yeah. Uh, four or five of the students from that first workshop are going to become published authors. That means uh, their books are going to be available in uh, barnesandnoble.com online stores, hardbound versions of their books, ISBN numbers, LCCN numbers, barcodes, the whole nine yards. Published books. Not just printed at Staples, but published books and um, so good luck and I hope yours was one of those selected. Okay? Me too. All right I really appreciate you tuning in today um, for the art gallery workshop. I hope that you enjoyed what we talked about. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of our talent right here in our in our region uh, coming in to talk uh, with us and share their work. That's really what this is all about. It's not about anything I've done or do or will do. That could care that could matter less and I care less about that. Earnestly and honestly we have some of the most amazing talent in our region um, in the entire country. I've been to over 300 schools and I've seen work from all over the place, multiple states and multiple counties. Pike County and the surrounding area have absolutely got given talent and it's talent that needs to be showcased. Not only showcased but appreciated and shown in a way that we let them know we appreciate it. If we expect things to develop more and more here in one of the greatest places in our world, then the first thing we have to do is start believing, fostering, and nurturing the talent in our youth. Without that, I don't know what we're going to do. An art gallery workshop serves as that in a small little corner, in a small little way. And you tuning in helps bring that possible. So thanks to theholler.org for um, helping and producing, Pike TV for helping and producing and, and making this show possible. Thank you for tuning in and checking it out. And until next time, keep drawing.